Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. There's been a lot of talk about Snow Leopard and running your Mac in 64-bit mode. A lot of misinformation out there. Let's get to the bottom of it in this episode of MacMost Now. With Snow Leopard, a lot of applications now run in 64-bit mode. This means they may be more efficient and faster. But there's been a lot of debate about whether or not your Mac is capable of running these apps in 64-bit mode. Let's look at all the issues and get to some answers. First of all, which Macs have 64-bit processors? Well, that will be any Mac with an Intel Core 2 Duo processor, not the Core Duo processors. Also, any Macs like some of the Mac Pros that have Xeon processors in them. So here's how to tell what processor you have. Go to the Apple menu, hold down the Option key, and select the Apple menu. And you get System Profiler here at the top. You can also run System Profiler in your Utilities folder and your Applications folder. Click on Hardware, and you'll see right here the processor name. And here I see I have an Intel Core 2 Duo. That means I can run 64-bit applications. Now there's a lot of confusion between having applications run in 64-bit mode and having your Mac boot into 64-bit mode. What people usually mean when they say boot in a 64-bit mode is that the kernel will boot and run a 64-bit version of the kernel. The kernel is the key piece of software behind Mac OS X. It's nothing you ever see, it's just something that addresses memory and performs other tasks. When you boot into 32-bit mode, the kernel is compatible with running 64-bit applications and running 32-bit applications that require very specific 32-bit kernel drivers. Not all applications need these. As a matter of fact, it's pretty rare. There's some QuickTime codecs, things like that. So having a kernel boot in a 32-bit mode gives you all the advantages of running 64-bit applications while still being backwards compatible with some other things that may be out there. Booting your kernel into 64-bit mode is something that's not really going to give you much of an advantage unless you have a lot of memory, more than 4 gigabytes. And even then, it's not going to help you access that. It just may make it a little faster. Now, all Macs except for Xserbs will boot into 32-bit kernel mode. I've actually done the shortcut, which is to hold the 6 and 4 keys down and reboot your Mac. And you can force it to boot into 64-bit mode. Not all Macs will do this. It has to be a really recent Mac. It has to be a Mac with a 64-bit processor and also a 64-bit EFI, which is a core chip inside your Mac. But my Mac Pro can do it. And when I booted in 64-bit mode, I didn't notice any difference between any of my applications in terms of speed or efficiency. So the bottom line is absolutely do not worry about this whole issue about booting into 32-bit or 64-bit mode. Let your Mac boot as normal and take advantage of using all of your applications in 64-bit mode. So which applications run in 64-bit mode? Well, if we go back into the System Profiler and we scroll down to Software and click on Applications, it will come up with a list of all the applications on your Mac. It usually takes a minute for it to come up if you've got a lot of apps. Once the list does come up, you can scroll through it and if you look all the way to the right, there's a column called 64-bit Intel. I'll bring it onto the screen for you here. There it is. This column, it either has a no or a yes next to every application. So if we scroll down and say look at something like the Finder, we can see yes, it runs in 64-bit mode. We continue scrolling down and looking at something like Safari, we also find that yes indeed, Safari runs in 64-bit mode. Interesting thing is if you look at something that's inside of iLife 09, like say GarageBand, you'll see that no, GarageBand 09 applications, actually universal apps, will still run on older processors and thus they are not 64-bit compatible. This doesn't mean that these apps won't run under Snow Leopard. Of course they'll run. Snow Leopard is great and that will run 32 and 64-bit applications and it does it seamlessly. So if you don't even bother yourself with this whole 64 and 32-bit issue, all your applications will just continue to work as normal. Now I haven't heard of somebody needing to do this, but if you for some reason need to force an application to run as a 32-bit app, then you can do so. For instance, select Safari, Command-I brings up the info window and you can see here there is an open in 32-bit mode checkbox. Check that off and as far launch as a 32-bit app as it would say if you had a Core Duo processor. Theoretically I could see this being useful if you had some sort of extension to an application that required it to be in 32-bit mode. So in conclusion, Apple's doing everything right here. Just let Snow Leopard boot normally. It'll run a 32-bit kernel, but all your applications will run a 64-bit, and you'll get all the advantages of having a 64-bit processor. If you've got more than 4 gigs of RAM, you may see some benefits by holding the 6 and 4 key and booting and having a 64-bit kernel, but I haven't experienced it and I haven't heard anybody else that see much of a boost for that either. 
And as for running application 64-bit, Snowleopard is going to do it if you have a 64-bit processor. And if you have an older processor, it's only going to be able to run as 32-bit applications. So there's nothing for you to do there either. Just let Snow Leopard do its job and your applications will run with maximum efficiency. I'll have more Snow Leopard videos including a look at QuickTime 10 later in the week. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.